Hey, what's happening everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. So this one is going to be going over a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about Profit Trailer, the new release, the Stochastic RSI Cross, um, the new buying strategies that they implemented. So those are going to be pretty sweet. Um, we're going to look at some, some trading view stuff, kind of give you guys a visual representation of what the buying strategies do. Um, we're also going to talk about my new PT feeder settings. Those are going on the GitHub, so you can check those out. Just keep in mind that they're definitely just starting points. There's so much more that you can do with feeder. It's a super powerful tool. Um, you know, there's definitely guys in our Discord group who are making some really, really insane scripts, and that is is really cool to see. So you can come in there into our Discord, check that stuff out, and then. Also, we're going to be talking about Defender's newest release, which is Auto Defend here. And this is going to be a real game changing feature for me. Um, I, I definitely think this is, you know, if you're using Defender, this is definitely a must use kind of thing. Um, this is going to kind of protect yourself in really any situation. It's going to auto enable defending when you get to a certain uh, negative percentage. So say you want your coins to go to, to start defending at negative 8%, you can just click in here, negative 8%, how many pairs do you want it to, to start defending? Um, I'll leave it at three, and then you have selection preferences down here. Um, the largest loss, the smallest loss, the, the largest cost, and the smallest cost. So let's just determine it on your bag size or your bag uh, negative percentage. So really, really cool update. Um, we'll kind of talk about this in a bit. So let's get into the feeder stuff, which would be this guy here. So what we have going on here, let me, let's go to this guy and we can type in any coin. Let's go to like QTUM, Bitcoin. Let's go to Binance. All right. So QTUM. This is, these are like your buying strategies, right? So what I'm going to be using, um, I'm actually not going to be using MACD, but I'm going to keep this pulled up to give everybody an idea of, of how we can play different buying strategies. So this is the new feeder app settings that I'll release on the GitHub. Um, what I want to do here is I only want to enable the coins that I'm currently holding, right? And these aren't necessarily the coins that I'm currently holding. I just, I don't want PT to be going out looking to buy um, some of these really small coins, maybe coins that just got on to, uh, to Binance. I want to keep these coins to coins that I know that I, that I like to trade that are kind of impulsive. Um, you know, you can change these out however you like. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm using, there's a couple things here. We can use the minutes to measure trend, the medium term trend. This is kind of a newish indicator. I say newish because it's been out for a little while. Um, but maybe not a lot of people are using it. Um, and just keep in mind that this is definitely just a starting point for, for you guys. But what I'm doing in this app settings file that is, is mainly different is I'm adjusting the indicators based on market conditions. So I'm starting everything with the exception of SMA, which I'm not using at all. Um, and I think the EMA stuff I'm not really using anymore. Um, but I'm, I'm starting everything out at a candle period of 1800. So this is really important because this is a 30 minute candle and I actually don't even think I used this 1800 in here, which is maybe my mistake, but, um, what I'm doing down here. So defaults, what I'm going to start using for my, my buying strategies is stochastic RSI cross stochastic RSI and the traditional RSI. So this is my default, um, app settings, buying strategies, right? And then go down to the DCA buying strategies. I'm using the same three. Um, you can adjust these. You can add more. You can, you know, delete these if you want. Um, you know, one of the ones that I, I actually want to talk about is the MACD. I actually really like the MACD on the longer time frame candle periods. Um, pretty much because it gives a good indication of where the market is probably headed on the larger time frames. So if you, uh, if you look at like the four hour, the one day, that's a good indication of where this coin may be headed. Um, so we can scroll down here, DCA. So I've been getting a lot of questions on these DCAs, right? So I have seven different DCA buy triggers and they're all at negative 1%. So feel free to change these as you see fit. Um, if you don't like using this strategy, by all means change it. 
the, my reasoning here, and this something that needs to be crystal clear is if you look at it this way, right? Like I have a hundred percent DCA by percentages on each level. So I've seen people use, you know, hundred DCA levels and, and have these uh, percentages decrease in value each time. That's a very viable strategy. Uh, but my strategy is to keep my coins as close to zero as possible, right? So what it's going to do on the first DCA level is it's going to buy 100% of the amount of, of, of my bag, right? So it's going to just double down basically when all of these strategies are true. And so that's, that's great because what it does, it's going to get triggered roughly the first trigger is getting triggered at negative one. And assuming these are all true at negative 1%, then it's going to double down my bag. And what happens in that scenario is it brings me up. My now my bag is at negative 0.5%. So that's keeping me in a sellable range. I don't want my DCAs to get down to, you know, negative 15% where it makes it, it difficult. Now, keep in mind, that is something that is likely going to happen in any market. You're going to end up with certain bags that just continually you know, have these massive down, downtrends. So in that situation, the reason I'm so excited about this auto defend thing is in that exact situation, what we can do now is use defender, enable this auto defend feature at whatever percentage you think your DCAs are going to be finished. So for me, it, it's probably closer to zero because every DCA buying trigger triggers another buy and it gets me to roughly 0.5%. So if I increase this to maybe negative three, if, if my DCA triggers, um, you know, if, if it gets all the way down to negative seven, or, or maybe I want to decrease this a little bit, negative six. Um, if it gets to negative six and all my DCAs have been, you know, completed on this coin, then auto defend will kick in and start defending this coin and breaking it up piece by piece. And so that's gonna be really powerful because it's it's an extra sort of protection method for your bags. And I'm really, really excited about this. Um, so that's gonna be really cool. Keep in mind though, that if you use seven DCA buy levels and say you're trading you know, 20 pairs, you wanna make sure that you have enough free balance to get you through all of your buy levels on all of your pairs. And especially if you're using Defender, you want to make sure that you have extra left over to sort of defend each pair, right? So it's kind of, it's a little bit more math, but it's worth it, right? It's, it's worth it to, to kind of dig deep and, and understand how these things work because then you give yourself the best opportunity to get out of these bags. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll continue forward. Um, I'm, I'm keeping on with my DCH, uh, sell strategy is gain. Point five, you know, something that a couple people in my Discord are using is they're using the sell value of or a, a sell strategy of R, stochastic RSI cross. So when you get that bearish divergence at the top here, when the fast moving line moves over the slower moving line, you get that that bearish divergence, what we call it, and then you sell when that is true. And then basically what they're doing there is they're keeping these to to a really small number. Um, the sell value, and then they're only selling at this bearish divergence. That's pretty smart because you can kind of ride up the wave a little bit more. Um, and, and as you can see, you can back test it and kind of make sure that your selling strategies are on point, right? So keep in mind, just do, do your own due diligence on these settings, you know, don't just copy and forget about it and then wonder what happened. So um, there's a lot more you can do with these. There's a lot of pair specific groupings that I'm not going to really cover in this video just for the sake of time. But um, that's something I'll, I'll get into in a future video for sure. What I'm doing in the bear market is I've noticed that the the longer time frame candles. So this is a four hour candle period for all of my indicators. And I just copied and pasted all of the indicators in here. So that way, if you guys do decide to use different buying strategies for either your, your traditional or your DCA buying stuff, uh, buying strategies, then, uh, then they're all set to the four hour. And what that means is you go on this four hour candles and you, you use the same strategies, but this gives you a better idea of where the market 
may be heading, right? It's, it's a longer time frame. It gives you more of a macro view on what's actually happening. So with the RSI, um, under this, this oversold spot at, you know, underneath 30, this has actually reached all the way down to almost 18. So that is a severe oversold spot. And as you can see on the chart, I know it's small, so I apologize. I'll speak it. It's you, you would have seen from the bottom to the top about a 4.5% gain. And, and the same idea here. Um, from the bottom to the top of this mini bull run here, we saw another 4.5%. So um, the, the same idea with the stochastic RSI, it would have triggered in the same spot. Um, and then if you're purely using the MACD, I don't recommend using the RSI, the stochastic RSI along with the MACD, because generally speaking, they're they're true on opposite times time frames. So um, if that doesn't make sense to you, then moving on. But anyway, so in a bearish market, I want to use the longer term time frames, right? The, the four hour. Um, in a boring market, I want to use a, a quicker time frame. I want to use a one hour. And, and the reason for that is if we go back to the one hour charts here, we can see that the one hour time frames in more of a bullish or a, a boring market, kind of like this, this would be considered more of a, bull, a boring market. Um, you, you can get a decent idea of, of where things are headed and you can get better better buys so right in here you would have had a buy right in here you would have had a buy so what what happened in there um, there's going to be a little more buying opportunities on a on a one hour time frame versus you know the four hour there's a lot less buying opportunities on a on a longer candle period so that's why in a boring market i want to get a little more aggressive more buying opportunities more chance for profit um, so once again you know, I, I increase the buy values the, the just slightly, um, but, you know, keep that in mind. And then same thing here. I'm using the one hour 3600. So then on the bull market, I'm using even more aggressive. So I'm going down to the 15 minute mark, because if you're in a bull market, that's saying that, you know, most of the coins are in an uptrend. And on the one hour in a bull market, it's unlikely that you're going to see the RSI in an oversold position. So I want to go down to the one or the, the 15 minute mark here and go back to sort of a, a bullish trend, which happened right in this area. So where was the RSI oversold? And it's not oversold very much in here. And the stochastic RSI, this is more of a, a telling indicator in a bull market. And I actually do want to only use the stochastic RSI in a, in a boring market and then use the stochastic RSI cross. Um, I think I just misspoke, but hopefully you get the idea. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove from the bull market, the RSI. And the reason for that is if we're in a true bull market, um, I want to be sure that I'm, I'm snagging good buys and I'm okay using the stochastic RSI with the stochastic RSI cross. And what that's doing is it's basically just saying that when this fast moving line crosses beneath this 20 line, I want to buy because that's a bullish divergence. The fast line is moving over the slow line. And you can see on the chart where this happens right at this cross. Look at these, look at these bull runs that we saw. Um, you know, 4.5%. I'll take that. You go back here to this spot here, um, right where it crossed would be right about there. And you, you move up 1.7%. I'll take that too. So that's, that's like my bullish reasoning behind these settings. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do. Um, with these, you can, like, I'm using a lot of, uh, you know, pair specific groupings down at the bottom. And that's something that I'm not going to include in these set of settings because this, this is just a starting point. Um, just keep that in mind. But these, these are working. These are working well. Um, these, these new strategies, this, the reason I'm making this video is to get these new strategies out there to give you guys an idea of how they're used, kind of the starting point for settings. These are working. Like I'm running this exact file right now, but I also have other app setting, app settings files that I'm running that have more specific, um, conditions per pair grouping. So that's, that's another thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys are interested, you know, the links are in the description for feeder, um, for defender as well. This is a game changing update. I'm really stoked to see this. Um, there's a lot to come. 
with with all of these things you know i'm I'm really looking forward to feeder launching some sort of market condition kind of trigger that gives you a time frame of of how often it will switch between market conditions so that way you can kind of stick in one condition longer than other but anyway we'll catch you in the